glory Many things you were on earth A holy king, a carpenter You are the living word Bread of heaven Sent down from glory Many things you were on earth A holy king, a carpenter You are the living word Awesome, awesome ruler Gentle redeemer God with us, the living truth And what a friend we have in you You are the living word Awesome ruler, gentle redeemer, God with us, the living truth, and what a friend we have in you. You are the living word, Jesus, 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 that's what we call you. Major born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the living word, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's what we call you. Major born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the living word. Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you. Major born, but on a tree, you died to save humanity. You are the living word. Jesus, Jesus, that's what we call you. Major born, but on you died to save humanity. You are the living word. Oh, 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 oh,
Hallelujah. You are the living word. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Give him a good praise in the house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to Dove Church today. Another chance to brag on Jesus. Another installation of the word of God. We thank God for you viewing. We thank God for those in person worship. And we ask your blessings on you and that you will continue to move in the things of God, that you be richly rewarded, that you would receive and your life would be transformed. With that, we move fastly into our message today. After our confession, everybody with your Bibles, and we've asked you to bring your paper Bibles with you. Amen. Amen. Everybody. Everybody. This is my Bible. I am who it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing. And hearing by by the word of God. Let's pray. Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you for what you've placed on our heart to minister to these thy people. Holy Spirit, take us to every point and every place that we need to hit today. Let us speak forth the mind of God. And we thank you, God, that we not only will be hearers, but we'll be doers of the word. And we'll be transformed by what we hear. We thank you, God, today for it, and we, we, we prepare to win. We prepare to succeed in the positive and the wonderful name of Jesus. And they all said, amen. amen. Today we're going to talk from the subject, an open heart. Say that with me, an open heart, an open heart. And fastly, if you will turn to And we're returning to Acts. I I moved away and talked about communion last week. And we're going back to Acts because that's where we were at. And we were kind of just trailing Paul through through Acts with Brother Luke recording and and leaving us messages uh, of the travels and the the miraculous things that were going on in the life of Paul and and various disciples, uh, Barnabas and Peter but in particular, Paul. And so Acts 16, 11 through 15. Acts 16, 11 through 15. And when you have it, say amen. Wait for you to turn to it. Acts. I need about three more of you to... All right, all right. And we'll be dealing with the New King James Version. That'll be our principal text. And if I go somewhere else, I'll tell you that. But but pastor's going to try to stay right in New King James Version so you can follow along. And it's important that we do that. I'm, I'm, I'm doing paper Bible because I want to get you used to finding scripture and, 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 and tracking it. And then you'll get used to it and know it. And, and after you use your Bible in a while, in certain places in your Bible, you can end up going to. And you won't have to flip through. You just know where it's at. And you put your hand there and it's there. Amen. 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 All right. Acts 16, 11 through 15. And it says, therefore, is that right? Therefore, sailing from Troas, we ran a straight course to Samothrace, and the next day came to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi. Now, let me stop because I'm explaining that the disciples, well, Paul and, and Luke are in Macedonia. Remember, we talked about the Macedonian call earlier, and so they wanted to go to Asia Minor, but They got a call to come on over into Macedonia, a man telling them, come over and help us. Well, we're going to show you who the man of Macedonia was. There to Philippi, which is the foremost city of that part of where? A colony. 
And we were staying in that city. What city was it? Philippi. For some time. And on the Sabbath day, we went out of the city to the riverside. Where prayer was customarily made. And we sat down and spoke to the women who met there. Everybody say the women. Who met there. there. All right. All right. I'm, I'm going somewhere. Now a certain woman named Lydia heard us. She was a seller of purple, purple from the city of Thyatira. Who worshipped God. The Lord opened her heart to heed the things spoken by Paul. And when she and her household were baptized, she begged us saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord... Come to my house and stay. So she persuaded us. When, when, when you hear a word to transform your life, you don't want the transformer to leave. You tell them, come on and hang out with me a while. I need to hear some more. Amen. And that's what the word should do. It should make you hungry for more. You shouldn't have to watch the clock and say, when is it going to be done? I'm through. Hey, I got enough for today. How many of you know you need more and more and, and more? If you don't, you need more and more and more. Amen? All right. All right. Lydia is our principal character, as you have ascertained already in this text. It is significant that her name was called because it was highly unusual in a male-dominated society to mention women. Few of them are mentioned through scripture, and we, we know many of them, but, 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 but they're not as prolific as the men that are mentioned. Amen? And, but we find that in the ministry of Jesus and Paul, women are mentioned quite a few times. And, and that reason is because Jesus, as well as Paul, saw no respecter in persons. They thought anybody could carry the gospel. Amen? All right. All right. I know that messes with some of the brotherhood a little bit. The dream of Paul of a man telling him to come to Macedonia might have been a woman. It was a man in the dream. But if we read this scripture, it said that there was a devout woman. Her name was Lydia. And, 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 and before that, it mentioned that the women met at the riverside. The reason why the women met at the riverside is because in any city, you needed to have 10 male Jewish men to have a synagogue. Or a worship spot. So the women couldn't make a worship spot. Because there were not ten devout men. In Philippi. So the women worshiped by the riverside. And they had prayer daily. And Lydia was one of those women. Are you getting the story? So what Paul saw in the dream, he encountered differently when he got over into Philippi. So the woman that, 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 he, that, that he met and encountered, Lydia became the first woman to get saved in Europe. She was the first one. That's why her name is mentioned here. So it opened up the gospel to women and said, let me make it clear that I'll have a man in a dream to send you to a woman that needs salvation because there's no synagogue. That can, but as usual, women are, 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 are architects and they, 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 they will find a way to get the job done. And so these girls say, we can't go to the house, but we can sit by the river. I don't know whether they were singing down by the riverside, but they were down there. Yeah. They were devout. They worship. Mind you, she was devout and she worshiped 
but she hadn't received Jesus. Many times people think that people that come to Jesus are already in a despicable state. Sometimes they are character good. They just haven't accepted Jesus. Everybody is not character filthy. <laughs> Come on. I need to say that. Some of the best people you will counter in the world sometimes are people that don't know Jesus. They're kinder, gentler, meeker. They will give to you faster. It's the Christian that has to pray about everything that they got to get an anointing from God before I can get an unction, before I can get doing it. They get religion. It, uh, I, wait a minute, I got to feel if God in this or not. A friend of mine told me a story. She said she was driving down Jefferson Avenue and she said she had gotten frustrated with church folks. She was trying to work. She had just, I, I just left a committee and I was trying to work in it. And, and, and they were fussing and arguing and stuff. And she said, and lo and behold, I'm driving down Jefferson. And I noticed that there was a, a, a white man and a black man. And there was a bottle of whiskey between them. And she said, I slowed down enough hoping that the light would catch me so they would catch up with me at the block. And one would drink out the bottle and, uh, and he, the, the next drunk would pass it to the next one and he'd drink out the bottle. Now this is a COVID reality. Don't do that today. I'm just sharing the story. <laughs> and she said, they got more sense and they, they're more brotherly than the people that I just left. Yes, yes, yes. Did, did, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. They godly wrong, but godly right at the same time. It's a, it's a, I, are you out there? How many know what I'm talking about? The worst, the worst person on your job, you can get to do the, the most for you. Whew. Four things I recorded about Lydia. First is her calling. She was a seller of purple. So she was an industrious woman. It doesn't mention what happened to her husband in Thyroptera, but we know that she had a household down in Philippi. And so not only did she have a household, to say that a woman had a household meant that, that, that she had some money. She had resources. Purple was a hot commodity. It said she sold purple. It didn't say she wore purple. <laughs> Come on. We got, we're reading the text for all it's worth today. She sold it, but she was not grafted. She didn't delve in purple. Everywhere she went, she wasn't purpled up. Purple down, purple all the way around. She sold it because it was valuable. It came from the seashells of certain, certain uh, 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 mollusks and, and they were farmed for it and to extract the dye to make this purple. It, it just was a rare thing and it was a rich thing. And anybody that had on purple was considered, oh, this, that's, that's costly. This, this, that, that's bad. That's, you, you don't see that all the time. You can't even afford to buy the dye for it to make something purple. And so this woman, we get, we, get, we get her economy through what she sold. And she had a household. So that meant she ran her whole household. So not only do we see a woman, we see an industrious woman, we see an entrepreneurial woman. That was her vocation. That was her, her calling. She was a salesperson. It was an honest calling. She was not like the women of 1 Timothy 5.13. Turn there. She was not one of these type of women. When you have it, say amen. Come on. Thank you, baby. 1 Timothy 5.13. 
Anybody getting blessed a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. This is a certain type of woman that Lydia was not. It said, and besides, they learn to be idle, but also gossips and busybodies, saying things which they ought not. She was not one of the women. She wasn't idle. She was not a gossip, and she was not a busybody because she was about her business. Oh, that's a lesson all by herself. If you get you some business, maybe you could get out of everybody else. <laughs> it was a genuine calling. She had a legitimate business. It wasn't under the table. It was what it was supposed to be. Although she had a calling and a vocation, a job, number three. Number two, well, she was legitimate. Number one, she had an honest calling to do a job. She had a vocation. And, 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 and number three, though she had a calling or a vocation, yet she was a worshiper of God. Because some people can't chew bubble gum, walk and chew bubble gum at the same time. You can't walk and serve God too. You can't work and serve God too. And the wise person knows how to do both of them. I'm working because I worship God. (laughs) I'm able to live, move, and have my being. Come on, come on, come on. Don't don't y'all preach my stuff for me. Do you understand what I'm saying? But we get it twisted. We work then God. Maybe if we God then work. And I'm encouraging do work. It's honorable to work. Come on, come on. Uh, But you need to bring balance to your work. Every time work... I, I can't do nothing for God. You get worn out for work, you get tired. I can't even serve God. I'm so tired out here. That's not of the Lord. Really, He wants you to work one job and make enough money on that one job. See, what's been going on in the country is that with, with unemployment, some of the people started exercising their option. We don't have to go and work for 13 cents and 50. Yeah, you know, and so the businesses, how dare they not come to work? And it's running out, so they're gonna have to go to work now. But, but the point is, it showed businesses something. See, if the disparity between the worker and the top person. Is by millions. Somebody need to bring it down so somebody else can come up. And maybe we can live with one job and make a living wage. She was a worshiper. She found time to improve her soul. Worship improves your soul. It's not optional. I never have been an on and off Christian like that. I realized early that worship the Lord, worshiping the Lord in the week helped me. Because Anything you do too often, you get accustomed to not doing. You can't have a vacation that lasts at your job for more than two weeks. Because when you go back, they'll have to teach you how to do everything. It's the same for church. The longer you miss 
I'm not picking on anybody, but come on. Is it true? Oh, I'll catch them next Sunday. God bless you, Pastor. And throw the cover off over yourself. Then we have this latest crew of young people. It's, it's, it's once a month or every other week. But we go to our job every day. And they don't have to call and tell us to come. Anybody boss call and say, you coming to work today? Anybody got one of them kind of bosses? They ask you, are you coming? You know when you're going to hear from them, don't you? Don't show up. Are, are y'all there? Lydia, this is the next thing. She was from the city again of Thyatira, which was a great way from Philippi. It was a long way from where she ended up. But for some reason, because of her vocation, her business brought her all the way to Philippi. And so when she got to Philippi, which was a seaport and, and a riverside city, it, it, it was great for, it, it was a retirement spot for, for a lot of Romans because after they came out of war, the veterans would settle in Philippi. So there was a lot of money to be made. And it got so lucrative, she said, I'm buying me a house and I'm making business right here. But that was the Lord set up to her destiny. And sometimes you think you're just moving because this is a good opportunity when it's really God's plan to get you into the kingdom. Because she wouldn't have met Paul in Thyatira. She had to meet him in Philippi. But when she met him, she was already engaged in worshiping and praying. Somebody say, already engaged. She's already doing something. My God. What did Lydia do? Just so you understand. She worshiped God according to the knowledge she had. And do you know the Lord will bless you? based on your limited knowledge of him until he can get something greater to you. She didn't know anything about the gospel. She didn't know anything about Paul. She didn't know anything about the cross and all of that. She, 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 she just, she, good Jewish information she had. And, and, and that was enough for her to come and pray by the riverside every day. God will find you and meet you where you are without excuse how many of us did he find us right where we are we was right wrong right wrong up down back was going forward back it up pushing forward laying to the side laying to the right <laughs> and he said he said I'm going to meet your sideways self right where you are how many did he find right where you were? Yeah, 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 yeah. He did it. He found you right where you were. And you know what? You got surprised, Lord. You, you would deal with me? Come on. You were surprised that he extended that great salvation to you, that mercy to you. My God. Well, maybe it was me, but, but I... Sometimes the grace of God is placed on those who before their conversion were very wicked and vile, publicans and harlots and everything. And, and, and 1 Corinthians 6 and 11 just jotted down and it said, such were some of you. Wow. But sometimes it's placed, his, his, his providence, his, his, his love and his grace is placed on those who are of a good character, who had some good in them. 
like the eunuch and Cornelius and then Lydia. It is not enough to be worshipers of God, but we must believe in Jesus Christ. For there is no coming to God as a father but by him. So she was missing the, the link. The next thing that happened to her, first she was a worshiper. She heard the apostles. So faith can only come for believing by hearing. Oh, that's important. Here is where prayer met an opportunity. The word was preached. When the word is preached, that's an opportunity. What is an opportunity for, pastor? Well, she was in prayer. The word was preached. So that was an opportunity to get what you've been praying about through the preached word. How can we expect God to hear our prayers if we will not worship him by listening? I want to say to you today, listening to the word is worship. <laughs> what are you doing right now? What are you doing? It's not a trick question. What are you doing? How do you know you're worshiping? Because you're listening. Is the word God? And what's the best thing you can do for God? Worship him. So when you listen to your word, his word, you are. Come on, come on. Boy, y'all getting A on this exam. So anytime you come to church, no, when the, when, the, when the singing is going on, I'm worshiping. When the dancing is going on, I'm really worshiping. But when the word is going on, I'm worshiping. So anybody that has an allusion to the word doesn't want to worship. When you don't like the word, you're distracted from the word, you don't like to worship. You are not a worshiper. Because you only know the will of God through listening to his word. You only know what he likes through listening to his word. You only know what he requires by listening to his word. You only know what makes the difference in your life by listening to the word. You only can plan for your success by listening to the word. Why are you not successful? Maybe it's because you're not listening. Because it's God that says, I know the plans that I have for you. And, and just in case you're going to miss it, there are plans for good to give you an expected outcome. What is an expected outcome and expected win? I come to win today. I, didn't, I don't show up every Sunday to be a loser. Come on, what, what you here for? Wasting time? See, I show up because this is a winning proposition right here. Me and this is enough to make it all the way through. And when I can't trust me, I trust this. <laughs> See, you need something greater than you and what you're thinking about all the time. So whatever you entertain will detain you. Because it will stop you from listening. But when you get in trouble, you want to come to the man of God and say, listen to me. And I want to tell you, did you hear God? Did you worship God? And they're going to say, what do you mean? Did you listen to God? When the word was preached, what were you doing? See, some of your problems could get answered if you just worship God. <laughs> Through God. 
See, it's, it's when you listen, that's when the psalmist said, Thy word have I, that I might not. See, that's come from listening. See, when you listen, you might hear the psalmist say, They who trust in the Lord shall be like Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. You might hear the Lord, the word of the Lord speak to you and say, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen that. That comes from listening. She was tender to the Lord. But you can be tender to the Lord. You can be emotional about the Lord. You can get emotional about the church. But I want to tell you, the Lord does the work. You don't do the work. The best thing you can be is available. Lord, I'm available. The best thing you can be is available. Do you hear me? It's the Lord that does the work. The number one thing about him is that he is the author of the work. The Holy Spirit is the sanctifier. It comes in and starts threshing and telling you, get rid of this. Showing stuff up. All that stuff you in denial over, it starts showing it up. And you, you say, am I? Whew, my God. Philippians 2.13. But before I, you get to Philippians 2.13, I want to tell you, conversion work is God work. He's the converter. How do I know that? Philippians 2.13. And it says there, you have it say amen. Let, let's start with where the work begins. It is God who works in. Yeah. Both to will. And to do his good pleasure. What is he doing? He, he, to will, it's God's will. And to do is God's activity. And he does all of this not for your joy, but for his pleasure. Ain't that awesome? What are you saying? God, you're saving me because that makes you happy? You're delivering me because that makes you happy? You know what you ought to say in response to that? Get happy, God. He loves us this much that he will convert us and it will be joyful for him to get us out of trouble. It's joy for God to get you out of a sticky place. It's joy for God to get you out of trouble. It's joy for God to not let the devil destroy you. That's his good pleasure. And you take it for granted. Ooh, I got away. No, it was the pleasure of God to say, not now. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You won't have him before grace can get a chance to get there. It's his good pleasure that we are not consumed. You didn't get killed in that drive-by because it was the pleasure of the Lord. He'd rather save you than to murder you. And some of you got a death wish. Because you can't stay out of trouble. But when it happens, know this, it wasn't the Lord's pleasure. 
to will and to do his good pleasure. Not as if we had nothing to do, but of ourselves, without God's grace, we can do nothing. Technically, you can't do nothing. You cannot do anything. But it's of his unmerited favor that grace. The next thing about this woman, the seed of this work that the Lord does, it's in the heart that the change is made. It's in the heart that the change is made. And the reason why people join church and they never do anything differently is because there was never a conversion in the heart. If you, if you became a believer and everything about you stayed the same, you, it never hit your heart. I don't understand how you can get saved and you don't show back up at church for another year. Or you get saved and you're not really in church. You, you, you did, what, 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 what are you doing? See, 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 after Lydia heard the word, she was available to the Lord. It said right there at the riverside that the Lord opened her heart. He did it. For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. It was his good pleasure to open her heart up. Oh, you're not getting this today. And the reason why he can't do it is because you're not available to have your heart open. He will open it. He's the opener. Sometimes when you're not thinking about him, he opened your heart. Some of you got saved on a humble. You don't know what well, I just know that one day I invited the Lord in. But, but, but while you think you were giving yourself to him, he was yanking your heart open at the same time. Woo. Because he'd rather take joy in saving us than losing us. And later on, John would write, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son because he loved us. He'd rather yank us into salvation than to lose us. And he gets joy about it. Are y'all getting this today? Let me say this, the unopened, unconverted heart is resistant to Christ. That's why you can get folk that come to church, but they resist it. They mind not even on it. Resist it. And then they will have this testimony in the world. I used to go to church, it didn't do nothing for me. Well, listen, brother, brother, clamshell, you never, you, your heart was never tender and it was never open to him. So it could do, and, and, and sometimes we were placed, we, we, we got so much information till, till it's like we put a padlock on our thinking. So when God spiritually tries to do something with us, we match it to our thinking, but we don't understand that his ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. That's why something you think God would never like, that's what he hangs out with. The nastiest person, no, ain't no God in that. And that's the one he'll stand up and put, put over, over supernatural stuff. And you'll say, well, God, what, what happened to me? Because cause, cause you tried to handle God's business and he knows his business better than you. Does that make sense? Anybody happy that one day you were the pleasure of God? <laughs> and that beats my cultural background. That beats 
my, the way I was raised. That beats all my Africana anything. Because the African needs Jesus. The Chinese need. The Islamic world needs. The Buddhists. Taoist. Any other ist. They need Jesus. And at the close of the day. That's what you need. And you need to be available so he can yank your heart open and get something inside of you that's better than anything on the outside of you. Because Jesus, excuse the name, trumps culture. When I'm in trouble, my culture don't save me. Did you hear me? Because it's only Jesus. I'm not going to get caught up to Jesus Christ. Have mercy. What were the effects of the work on our heart? And I'm almost done. What were the effects of the work of an open heart? When he opened her heart, when God opens your heart, there is some things that start to happen. First of all, she took great notice of the word. She desired the word even more. When her heart was open, she said, this is good. She not only gave attendance, she gave attention. You can be in attendance and not paying attention. But while Paul met them at the riverside, she sat down with the other women while God was yanking open her heart and she was, she was in attendance. She was there with Paul. See, sometimes y'all want long distance touches when you need to be in attendance. See, because it's something about being in attendance that you can get a, the, the, the nuances of attention. How many of you heard a tape, but you say, it's better in person? I like to watch concerts on TV, but nothing is like a live concert. Because you get all the little side nuances and the stuff that ministers to your heart and stuff. And so not only was she in attendance, but she was paying attention. Come on, come on, come on. Look around at somebody and say, are you paying attention? Then look back at him. No, you're not. In school, teachers know when you drift. They know when you daydreaming. They know when you're somewhere else. And they trying to teach the lesson. They don't ask you, what did I just say? They ask one, uh, one question. Are you paying attention? And everyone in the room snaps around like this. And then she proceeds to ask the question. What did I just say? One time one embarrassed me real bad. And I said, I'm going to pay attention from now on. In. <laughs> See, I'll tell on me because y'all won't tell the truth. Y'all won't tell. Y'all pretend like I'm straight up in there. I was listening to every word, 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 every word she said. I was bad. I knew I had drifted. I was sitting in class, but I was out that window somewhere. And, and it wasn't a he. It wasn't a she. It was a he. And he said, uh, Mr. Trammer, what is such and such and such and such? And I gave the wrong answer. He said, go back to sleep. Because you can be in attendance, but not paying attention. And that's what's happening to a lot of churches. They're in attendance, but they ain't paying attention. Because when you pay attention, you keep getting something. You say, I like this. My, I'm getting this. I, I need this. 
this is going to help me. So she was doing good to her soul because it had, her heart had been yanked open. So she was in attendance and she was paying attention. Then and only then does the word apply. The next evidence of, 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 of a heart that is open, wherever the heart is open by the grace of God, it will appear by, by, by not only diligent attendance and, and, and attention, it will be released through service to others. When the word comes in, it, it, it does something, it makes you want to serve. You hear something. How does it make you want to serve? I want to get this to somebody else. I want to make sure somebody hears this. I'm always amazed that brand new Christians, when they first get saved and they catch on fire, they have little information. They can't find anything in the Bible. They just know what changed them and they get people lit up all over the place with, with, with minuscule information. They become fruitful. That's because they heard something that changed them. Wow. The next thing she did, when, when he yanked your heart open, she said, I'm going all the way into this. She said, I'm getting baptized, me and my whole household. She didn't even ask them, y'all going to church today? Her and the whole house. Of, come on. Put your trunks on and, and stuff. We, we're getting in some water. <laughs> oh, oh, we didn't hear that. <laughs> we keep giving people option over stuff they should not have a choice about. As for me and my house. No, 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 no. No, no, no. And we're wondering why... They get raggedy everywhere is because we've given them too many options. Never forget ministering to a, 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 a lady and I was getting blessing some kids and she said, "Well, mine get old. I'll just let them choose what what religion you know what they want to do." But she had forgotten that she had just told me that they were looking for a school for their child. And because I was in somebody's house, I didn't want to blast her out. I said, did you let him choose the school? You see how crazy we can be over stuff? But something as important as their soul gets minimalized. <laughs> because that's the importance we, we, we give it. You can only carry people as far as you go. I, want to, I don't want them to be offended with me. You know what? We learned earlier, we, we're not making friends. We got to be parents. You can pick up some friends in the street. I don't care if you don't like me. I was talking to Pastor Marcia the other day. She said for years before she, she came of age, she thought her mother was crazy. My mama crazy. She said, my sister would do the same thing over and over again, and she'd tear her up every time. And I said, don't you know she's crazy? <laughs> you don't know she's crazy, do you? But some of them, they too cute to kick. We ain't going to, I don't want to hurt them. If you want, somebody will. And I know this ain't popular, and it's going to be on, on, on YouTube and, and, and one of them tubes. But because we want friends. Get you a personality and make some friends. Because <laughs> the one thing I know about kids is they're going to leave you one day. And you're going to be sitting up looking crazy. What's wrong? <gasps> My friend left home. What friend? 
my child. I'm looking at a few people. They told they 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 children. When you get gone, stay gone. <laughs> Give me the key. <laughs> Helping somebody in here today with something. Open heart. She, she, she was baptized. The, the next, and, 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 I'm, and I'm drawing to a close. She was very kind to ministers. Once she heard the word from Paul, it endeared Paul to her, and so she became kind to them. And 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 number one, let's look at how God set Paul's ministry up. She was a rich woman. Paul blessed her, and in turn, she didn't say, go on, I ain't giving you nothing, I don't want, you know, I know you, you, you're a preacher, you might want a little change. She didn't do that. She said, you know what I want you to do? Don't leave yet. If I have been faithful over to what's been taught to me, my heart was opened by the Lord. I consented. We got baptized, me and my whole house. If I've been faithful to that word, what I want you to do is come and stay with me a while. See, when you know that there is a gift among you, you don't want it rushed away. Did, did you hear me? No, come on, come to my table, sit down, because I want to hear you talk about it some more. I know we're not by the riverside anymore. Just, just come on to my house. I'm going to fix a little food. What do, you, what, do you, what do you want to eat? When do you want to eat? You need some new sandals? You see, see, if you're getting blessed, you don't mind blessing because it has changed. Hey, God, it has changed your life. But when you don't understand the blessing of what's engendered to you, you will constantly just put it on a surface level and, and, and make all kind of games with it. But when something is being poured into you, if you're listening, that has transformed your life, you ain't ready for it to rush away. The other day I was at a banquet and the preacher preached so good till I said, don't stop, don't stop. He said, God bless you. I said, no, 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 don't stop, don't stop, don't stop because this is liberating me. You know it's God till you feel one way coming in and you feel better. On your way out. That's liberation. Why are you rushing that when God is blessing you? So Lydia blessed him and said, hang out with us. Yeah. So the Macedonian call from a man was a woman that got into the kingdom of God. Yeah. And from then on in, she blessed Paul's ministry. And everywhere he went, he talked about the offerings that he got from Macedonia. Yeah. Blessings to you today. Oh. My God, my God. Let him open your heart. Let him open it. Come on, give him a good praise in the house. Come on, let him go. Don't rush away the blessing. All over the room, just, you might say I'm already saved, but just, just surrender and say, God, God, God. You do the work in me, God. Oh, God, you do the work, God. Boy, it's God who works in you both to do. to do for his good pleasure it's God it's God <laughs> he's working on you today and making you fruitful he's, he's working on you
So, Father, we thank you. And we bless you. And we give you glory and honor. If you haven't confessed your life to confess Jesus Christ as Lord, you can do that today. Give him your heart. God, I'm available to you. But you are the converter. You can yank my heart open. If that's you today, find a good house. This is a good one. 4660 military. Trust God. All over the room, lift up hands and begin to worship God. Hallelujah. I want some people to open up today. <laughs> Praise the Lord. To all of our viewers, we thank God for you and we encourage your financial support of this ministry. We are here to bless you and know that the Lord will bless your giving. You can use PayPal by going to our website, dovechurch.org forward slash giving, which will take you to our PayPal page. We appreciate your sharing this time with us today. God bless you.